Okay, so when making pricing decisions, we have to ask several questions like, what is our target profit? How much will our customers pay? And are we a price taker or a price setter for this product? To answer these questions, or the answers to these questions are often complex and ever-changing. Stockholders expect the company to achieve certain profits. Economic conditions, historical company earnings, industry risk, competition, and new business developments all affect the level of profit that stockholders expect. Stockholders usually tie their profit expectations to the amount of assets invested in the company. Managers can't set prices above what customers are willing to pay or sales are going to decline. So the amount that customers will pay depends on the competition, the product's uniqueness, the effective of marketing campaigns, general economic conditions, and so on and so forth. So imagine a continuum with price takers at one end and price setters at the other end. A company's products and services will fall somewhere along this continuum. Companies are price takers when they have little or no control over the price of, of their products. This occurs when their products and services are not unique or when competition is heavy. For example, uh, our examples include food, commodities, milk, corn, natural resources like oil and lumber, and generic consumer products and services like paper towels, dry cleaning, banking. Price takers use a method to price their products known as target costing. Companies are price setters when they have more control over pricing. In other words, they can set prices to some extent. Companies are price setters when their products are unique, which results in less competition. Unique products such as original art and jewelry, special manufactured machinery, patented perfume scents, and custom-made furniture can command higher prices. These kinds of companies use cost plus price methodology. Both branding and product differentiation give managers more control over pricing. Without such features, a company must often settle for selling its product at the same price as its competitors. Managers would rather be price setters than price takers. To gain more control over pricing, companies try to differ differentiate their products. They want to make sure their products are unique in terms of features, service, and quality, or at least make you think their product is unique or somehow better, even if it's not. Okay, so target costing starts with the market price of the product, meaning the price that the customers are willing to pay. This will be for price takers. And then we subtract the company's desired profit to determine the product's target cost. So target cost is going to be the cost to develop, design, produce, market, deliver, and service the product. In other words, the total cost is going to include every cost incurred throughout the value chain related to that particular product. So in this relationship, the market price is going to be taken. And if the product's current cost is higher than the target cost, then the companies have to find a way to reduce cost. Otherwise, it's not going to meet its profit goals. Managers often use ABC costing along with value engineering to find ways to cut costs. In setting regular sales prices, companies must cover all of their costs. It doesn't matter if they're inventoryable product costs or period costs. So in this example, we can see here that the market price would be $3 per item. So if they're selling 250,000 units, that's 750,000 and they hope to make $100,000. So that means they have to have all of their costs under 650,000 for producing 250,000 units. So what happens after we calculate that target cost? There's two potential outcomes with target costing. The actual cost is less than the target total cost. And if that's the case, then we're okay to proceed. Now, if the actual cost comes in greater than our target cost, then we have some choices to make. One, we can accept a lower profit. So maybe we wanted $100,000 worth of profit, but we can only seem to get to 80,000. We would have to decide if that's acceptable. We can try and cut our fixed costs, maybe renegotiate a lease or um, try and find ways to cut our fixed costs. We can try and find ways to cut our variable costs, or we could use other strategies like trying to increase our sales volume, change or add our product mix, and differentiate our products. Let's take a look at those. 
So how could the company increase demand? Well, maybe it can reach out for new markets or do some increased advertising. You have to think though, what is the advertising gonna cost and how many extra items would we need to sell in order to cover those additional advertising costs? Again, those are some of the questions that managers have to ask. So um, they don't have an easy task when the current total cost exceeds the total, I'm sorry, target total cost. To gain more control over pricing, companies often try to differentiate their products. So they wanna try and make sure that their products are unique in terms of features, service, quality. And how do they do that? Again, typically through advertising. So sometimes companies just can't compete given the current market price. And if that's the case, they may have no other choice than to exit the market for that particular product. Now when the product is unique, remember we can be a price setter, and the, so the company has more control over pricing. However, the company still needs to make sure that the cost plus price is not higher than what customers are willing to pay. The company may use focus groups, trial markets, surveys, um, to try and figure out how customers would respond to its cost plus price. The company may find out that the cost plus price is just too high or it might find out that it could set the price even higher without jeopardizing sales. Notice how pricing decisions are used in our two keys to decision making. Remember, we need to focus on relevant information and use the contribution margin approach that separates both fixed and variable costs. So the target pricing approach here, we're gonna start with the company's full cost and then we'll add desired profit to come to a new price. So here's an example. Let's assume that this particular product benefits from brand recognition. So the company has some control over the price it can set. If the current price is $3, can the company charge $3.20? And that's what the analysis says here. We can see what our current variable costs are, plus our current fixed costs that gives us total current costs of $700,000. If we hope to make a 10% return on a million dollars of assets, that's $100,000, meaning our target revenue is 800,000. And if we sell 250,000 units, that means we need to charge 320 per item. So the question is, if the current price is three, can we bump up our price to 320? And the answer is it really depends. Depends on how well the company's been able to differentiate their product or brand name. Again, they may use multiple variety of ways to figure out how customers would respond to this new price. If they find out the price is too high, then they would have to um, reevaluate. Or they could figure out perhaps that they could charge even more. So again, here's a decision rule on pricing decisions. Companies tend to be price setters when their prices are unique. Unique products are produced as single items or in small batches. So we would use a cost plus pricing approach. However, companies are price takers when their products are considered high volume commodities and they would use a target costing approach.